What if I told you there was a device that acted like a 1541, except the disk in the drive was the internet? By loading the URL, as you would a normal file on Commodore machines. It even traverses D64 and zip files. There's even a browser plugin that lets you send URLs directly to the meatloaf. There is a top-level short code service that translates long URLs to easy-to-type codes to load. And soon, you'll be able to see all the short codes online and even add your own. The best part about this thing? It costs less than 20 bucks. Excellent. We need to propagate our 8-bit singularity, so we're forcing Deadline to put one of these together step-by-step step so that you can build your own. <laughs> Deadline, show them how to print the meatloaf case. Welcome to City Zen. I am Deadline, and you are about to find out what is so great about the meatloaf. Right now, I'm printing off the 3D case from the meatloaf project. It is in the Git repo on GitHub. There's also another one on Thingiverse if you choose to do that one. But either way, you're going to want to build one of these cases or get one made because you want to protect this awesome investment that you're about to make. These 3D cases will be available on our Etsy website. We'll leave a link in the description for all this stuff. Deadline! Show them how to build the meatloaf. The first thing you're going to want to get is a Lawland D32 Pro version 2.0. It's got to have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth board and uh, you need it to make sure that it has an SD card slot on it. Make sure that they get the Pro version with PS RAM. And oh yes, PS RAM. Good. Now tell them about the 6-pin DIN cord for the IEC bus. I'm getting to it. You can also get the 6-pin DIN that you'll need for the IEC from Amazon as well. And it actually costs more than the ESP board. Imagine that. Why, I never. Actually, if you cut that cord in half, you can make two meatloaf devices with it. So it's cheaper than you think. You're right, Clicky. Tell me something I don't know. Step 1. Deadline. Prepare the DIN cord. I never thought you'd ask. So what we're going to do now is tin the wires and get it ready to solder onto the ESP32. Show them the pinout information. Well, here it is. All you got to do is wire it up just like in this pinout configuration. We'll post a link to the image that's on the internet in the description of this video. If you don't know which pins are on the ends of the wires, you can do a continuity test on the wires. I recommend writing down the numbers on a piece of notepad or something while you're doing this. When you're done, this is what the Lolland D32 Pro should look like. Excellent work. Now show them how to plug it into the desktop. Clicky, our viewers are sophisticated. They would get upset if I did that. Show them anyway. Fine. Here's me plugging it in. And here's me plugging it into the other side. And now I'm turning on the USB hub and I plug the IEC cable into the Commodore 64 that it's connected to. There you go. Oh look, the meatloaf started coming on and it's got lots on it. Good, you got it up and running. That'll make it easier for us to defeat Miss Dawes. I'll brief Victoria in the battle room. Now they need to know how to get the software running. Deadline, show them how to configure the meatloaf. Step one. Let's go ahead and set up our VS Code environment in order to get the meatloaf programmed and up and running. I've talked about VS Code before. It's an awesome program. And if you do any kind of coding at all, this is what you want to get. That aside, it is required for this project. So it's a free download. Go to the VS Code website and download it. Show them step two. Now that you've got VS Code installed, we can go ahead and get the GitHub repo from GitHub. And now you can get it by downloading the zip file or using the git clone method, if you're familiar with that. Deadline, step three. Now that we got VS Code and the repo, what's next? Well, we have to install an extension on VS Code called Platform IO. This is so we can talk to the ESP32. I've put chapters in this video so you can pause or go back to any section. Deadline, step four. Now in VS Code, open a folder and then browse to the location where you unzipped the repo. Now we want to copy the platform IO 
.ini sample file and you can do that by right clicking on that file and hitting copy and then going down a little bit and hitting paste and it'll create a new file. Now you have to rename it to platformio.ini. Now you want to scroll down on platformio.ini to around line 75 and adjust your COM port settings. There's upload port and monitor port. And they both need to be changed. The default is set to Mac. So you see me calling out the Mac and put whatever you want in there or whatever your system has. For my system I have COM9 so I'm going to put COM9 in upload port on Windows section upload port and monitor port. The next thing you're going to want to do is go to line 48 and change your Wi-Fi SSID information. Enter in your Wi-Fi and password in this spot, in this place. You're making this seem easy. Good job. You know, Clicky, ever since you've got that voice upgrade, you've become really annoying. I don't remember asking you. Now let's get on to the next step. Deadline. Show them how to build the ESP32 image and file system. Now that you've edited the platformio.ini file, it's time to click on the alien hand over to the left and then select Lolan D32 Pro. Now this section might take a few moments to populate with the options. So you'll see a bar across the top, sort of spinning. Let it go until it's done. Just have some patience. Now you're gonna look under Lolan D32 Pro under the general folder and there will be a feature called build. This is what we want to click on to build the meatloaf program. You might notice that in the terminal there's a lot of stuff going on. It's the actual program getting built. Uh, you might see some warnings in there but don't worry about those. You're going to be looking for this green text down here that says success. Isn't that what we're all looking for? The green text that says success. Yep, and now we click on the upload file system image and it'll build and upload the file system image. The final step is to go to the Lolan D32 under general and press upload and monitor. This will upload the firmware image and start a monitor. If you put everything together and modified your platform IO properly, this is the kind of screen you're going to get. It says Meatloaf CBM, and it's got a lot of logging information from your Meatloaf. And if you notice down near the bottom, it says Virtual Devices Started. You got 04, 08, 16, 20, 21, 29, and 30. These are all going to be devices that you can access on your Commodore 64 now. There's a way to configure these, and we're going to be um, developing this system a little better and adding a configuration application for the Commodore 64. Also, Jamie is working on a web-based configure tool as well. At this point, everything's done. You can now use your meatloaf to access files on the internet. It took you long enough? Now show them what it can do. Deadline! Show them how to use the meatloaf. When you first turn on the meatloaf, it has a drive already connected on device 8, and it has a virtual file system that has a few utilities already built in. But that's not important right now. We're going to be showing you what makes the meatloaf cool. The protocol to use to load meatloaf thing is ML colon. And this is sort of a uh, directory or a domain name service that is provided by the meatloaf server. Essentially, there are shortcuts to internet locations. Uh, ML colon CXN is a alias for our tech.citizen.net slash M64 which you can load and check out our programs. Eventually there will be a web portal that will let you assign aliases in the system so that I could go in there and modify CXN to point to somewhere else if I'd like. And so now this is actually loading a file 
a Commodore 64 program file that is stored on our web server over the internet. Enough of this. Show them the browser plugin. I was going to say, but wait, there's more. Anyway, there is a browser plugin, and if you go to the extension store for your browser and search for Send to Meatloaf and install it, well, it'll work. Let's see the Meatloaf extension in action. This extension will add a context menu entry, and you can browse to anywhere on the internet. Choose a Commodore 64 D64 file or PRG file. Right click, send to Meatloaf. The Meatloaf server will know it's you because it'll be coming from your LAN. And so it queues up uh, whatever it is you sent to Meatloaf in the server. So now you go back to the Commodore 64, load ML colon star, and it will load whatever you sent to the browser. So there you go, that's how to put a meatloaf together and get it working. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comments. Or better yet, go to the Meatloaf Discord channel and get involved so we can get this going a little better. I want to give a shout out to our patrons. Thank you for supporting us. and. If you would like to become a patron, please go over to our patron.com slash citizen site and that would be cool. And please give us a like and a share and a subscribe and all that kind of jazz so we can grow our channel and make better videos. Serving you, the Commodore community, this is Cities In 1990FM. Until next time. Hey, you can't just end it yet. I still haven't shown everyone the new dance routine I've been working on. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of our new programming series. And be sure to check out all the other vintage computer related videos on our channel right here on City Zen.